All right, so one of the first podcasts I listened to this year was Theo Vaughn interviewing Sean Strickland. And though you might guess what exactly they talked about, you probably didn't guess that Sean Strickland would be sitting there crying to Theo Vaughn. And I wanted to talk about that today and what my takeaways were. And uh, let's jump into it. So what's going on? Welcome to the Risen Fallen Podcast. I am your host, Mark Hendrickson. And what you can expect to hear is open and authentic conversations about things like mental health and self-development. And so um, I just wanted to kind of talk about this uh, this podcast episode between Sean Strickland and Theo Vaughn. And so obviously they talked a little bit about uh, fighting and, and mixed martial arts. And if you don't know anything about Sean Strickland or Theo Vaughn, then I do highly recommend going and checking out both these gentlemen. Very, very entertaining gentlemen. Um, and both of them have kind of come from a different path, a different past of trauma. And obviously, and the reason I think that a lot of men love these two gentlemen so much and look up to them so much is because they basically embody um, one of uh, very few paths of the ways that men try to deal with their problems and their trauma. So a lot of people, you know, uh, in the world of mental health and, and self-development space, they, they constantly bring up the messaging of, you know, men just need to talk about their problems. And, you know, a lot of the times um, we don't create enough space for men to open up about their problems. You know, they, they, there's this kind of discussion about the idea behind, you know, men just need to talk about their problems. And if we were able to just talk about these things, then a lot of these problems would be alleviated. And that, that was, you know, a lot for a long time, I thought the exact same way. That was my main motivation for starting a podcast. And so that's one of the ways that obviously men can deal with their problems, with their traumas, with their pain. And then looking at Theo Vaughn, you kind of see a different route that he took. Like he takes a, a route that uh, a lot of men take, you know, they're probably just not as good as he is at it, but you know, he takes a route of making fun of and, and trying to make light of his problems. You know, he uses comedy, uh, being able to find laughter and joy in the things that bring us pain and sorrow, uh, laughing in the face of your pain or in the source of your pain and separating what, you know, is a legitimate worry and what isn't a legitimate worry. You know, when we talk about comedy and we talk about, you know, finding a way to, to, present the problem that you're dealing with in a way that brings humor in a way that brings a smile to our face to just try and view it. It's, it's almost like a game of mental gymnastics to view it in a different perspective. And I think that when we do things like that, I know even for myself, when I can make, you know, a little bit more self deprecating humor, a little bit of jokes at my own expense. And when I can start to laugh at some of the things that I'm like, you know, if you can be creative enough to find a way to laugh at your problem, just the perspective shift of that alone is sometimes enough to drag us out of those, you know, panic attack, anxiety attack situations where your brain is so, so super fixated on one way of looking at your problem that it looks like it's insurmountable. And, and I think that by thinking about our problems and our pain and our sorrow in a way that, you know, we have to play this game of mental gymnastics or, or mental yoga and stretch the truth or stretch the situation or our perspectives about those things into a way that we can laugh at what brings us pain and sorrow, I think is, uh, it's a great exercise mentally for us to be able to shape our own perspectives on things and, and, and recreate the perspectives that we have already. And then obviously looking at Sean Strickland, 
uh, he does uh, he does use a lot of humor. If you listen to his interviews, if you listen to his press conferences, most of the things he says are jokes or the things that he truly does believe, and he's presenting in a way that he th- he feels like you might digest it better if he he wraps it into a joke. And that's just my perspective on it. That's kind of the way that I look at it, um, and and I kind of use tactics from both sides. But Sean Strickland, obviously. You know, when he um, is dealing with his pain and with his trauma, and I'm not going to dive into the sources of each of their trauma or how they've kind of dealt with it, but I just feel like when you look at Sean Strickland from the outside looking in, he embodies this idea or this this uh, method of dealing with trauma and pain via exercise or violence or, or fighting. And I think that a lot of the time these things are another great way to kind of deal with your pain because when you start to do any sports, martial arts or anything like that, any exercise, any organized game or sport, whether it be fighting or any other sport, hockey, basketball, football, baseball, whatever you play, you are introduced for the very first time on a very small scale, even though it feels huge sometimes, what a loss feels like. You know, I entered a jiu-jitsu competition this this past weekend, and I lost my matches. It was, uh, you know, lesson learned. I, I kind of, whatever. I'm not trying to, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, you're introduced to losing. You're introduced to not being, like, literally, objectively not being good enough to win. You're introduced to that, and I think that a lot of people can deal with that uh, issue in life, not being good enough to succeed or win or whatever it could be. And, you know, you can take that one of two ways. Maybe I never will be good enough, or maybe if I can work on my weaknesses, I can be good enough one day. And so I'm not good enough right now, or I wasn't good enough today. You know, I didn't show up. I didn't do my best performance. But if I analyze my weaknesses and if I capitalize on my strengths, then I can be successful in the future. So you're introduced to losing and then you learn how to overcome that loss. Uh, that's something that fighting or sports or anything like that is going to help you out. It's not the only way to do it, but obviously it is a very literal way, you know, when it comes to fighting or jujitsu or anything like that. You know, it's kind of inarguable. If you get choked out or you tap or whatever happens, you know you lost. You know it's objective. Like there's no way to be like, oh, well, I didn't actually tap. Like you could be like that, but then you're working in a completely different frame of reality. So it's like things like fighting or sports or anything like that is so objective that it's just like, yeah, we lost. And, and there's people that can twist it and, and bend reality, but you know, if if that's the world you're in right now, you got bigger issues than uh, this podcast can help. But uh, yeah, fighting, sports, uh, exercise, anything like that, any rigorous exercise, it doesn't even need to be fighting. You know, it's a great way to kind of deal with those problems and traumas and, and panic attacks because it forces you to be present and it forces you to not give up when things get difficult. You're not thinking about your taxes or your relationship or your, you know, any uh, video games or your sports teams. When you're in the middle of a workout and you're suffering and, and you know, perhaps someone's trying to hit you or maybe you're trying to hit something else or, you, you know, when you're in a game, when you're rigorously working out, if you're in a sports game or you're just by yourself, it forces you to be present and, and deal with the problem that is directly in front of you. And it, it blocks out everything else. And when things get very difficult in a rigorous exercise or a hard workout or in a, in a sparring match or anything like that, like that, and your body starts to think, you know, maybe I can't do this, which is a, a common th- uh, thought that we get when we're dealing with pain and, and sorrow and, and mental struggle and, and, and things, you know, along those lines, we can see parallels between fitness and real life when you're brain and your body are starting to tell you, you know, this might be a little bit too difficult for us. Maybe we can't actually do this. This, you know, when it starts to feel insurmountable, one of the lessons that exercise and martial arts and that area of life can teach you is that you're still in the game and you're still, you still have a chance. If you're still breathing, if you're still alive, 
you still can you if you're still breathing and you're still alive you can still get yourself into a better position than you're in right now life's not over yet you can still improve your situation progress and growth are possible and so I encourage you guys to go and check out this uh, this podcast episode between Theo Vaughn and Sean Strickland and, and the way things unfolded. Obviously, there's a lot of entertainment behind it. They're both very entertaining, funny people to listen to. Um, and then, obviously, they dive into a little bit more of Sean Strickland's trauma and what he's been going through and what he has been through. And Theo kind of opens up about his trauma and his life. But... Um, I think that the main impressive part of this entire interview is when Sean Strickland, you know, is talking to Theo Vaughn and, and they kind of have, I suppose, broken down any barriers between them. And, they, and they've gotten to a point where it's like, yeah, this person may, you know, actually, you know what? I think that one of the most interesting things about this this podcast interview is I think that Sean Strickland has had the the level of trauma in his life where he kind of understands that most people that he interacts with like probably 90 percent of people that he interacts with will not be able to even imagine the type of things that he's gone through and i think that it's it's actually really beautiful that theo can create such a space where he actually feels vulnerable not enough to talk about it and not talk about it in the sense where Most men would bring up these types of things where they're kind of making fun of it or they're laughing about it or anything like that where Sean's guard completely drops. All his walls are taken down and he sits there and vulnerably explains what he's hurting about and and they kind of have this like heartfelt moment where Sean starts to cry and breaks down and Theo just sits there and he says, it's okay, buddy. Like, like let's, I, I, we don't have to talk. I'll just sit here and be there for you. And I think that that's a, a very beautiful moment because as men, I feel like when we're hurting, when we're struggling, when we're suffering, I think a lot of the time people are telling us to speak up and talk about our problems. A lot of the times, you know, maybe you, the woman in your life, your girlfriend, your mother, your boss, your whatever, will tell you you need to talk about your problems and solve your and, and and that's the way that you know and as men I feel like sometimes we don't even know how to put words to our problems and we don't really know how to feel our problems and so while we're trying to even just feel those problems you know someone's saying explain it as well it's kind of like the it's kind of like in school when someone's like in math class like someone's like give me your answer and then explain your answer as well and you're like sometimes i don't know how to explain how i got to this conclusion but i just did and i feel like a lot of the time emotions and quote unquote feelings for men is kind of similar like it's kind of like when someone's telling you to explain your problems you're like i'm just trying to figure out what's going on let alone explain it and i think that that's why things like exercise can be so therapeutic for for us as well because i think that a lot of the time we think better when our bodies are doing something i think that for men it's very difficult to think in the lens of emotions i think that a lot of the times for us to be productive in some of the other areas of our lives we have to not think about those things, you know? I think that when when uh, when it comes time to putting food in the fridge and a roof over your head and clothes on your body, sometimes you do have to push aside feelings for, you know, making money and getting shit done so that you can actually fucking survive the next day. And so when someone sits you down and says, okay, now explain your feelings, I think a lot, I think I think only other men can actually start to understand like sometimes it's the it, you're in the place where you don't need to talk. You you can't talk. And sometimes you do just have to sit there and be with somebody that loves you and and can express that for you. And I guess sometimes that's why men just suck at kind of explaining what we're going through and we just have to kind of feel it. And then have a, a positive, you know, 
a route to go down to deal with those emotions, to deal with that pain. And I think obviously like sport and martial arts and, and exercise is one of those things. But I think that creating any art, creating anything, any anytime, you know, maybe just playing guitar or drawing a picture or because it kind of like exercise or fighting or martial, I guess it's in the name. It, it is art. You're creating something with your, I guess, just with your body. And I think that if you can't create anything, like if you could just be like, you know, do something physical that helps you process what you're going through, whether that is drawing a picture or, you know, uh, I don't know what it is for you, but I, I, I'm pretty big advocate for exercise and, and, you know, that avenue to go down. But, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I just want to come on here and chat about that interview. I will uh, post links to it. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it by now, but super powerful interview. I sent it to like my closest friends right away when I listened to it and uh, I rewatched it again today. So I thought I'd just come on here and share that with you guys and, and, uh, you know, just kind of see what you guys think see what you think about it so on that note i will uh check in with you guys next episode um much love peace out i love you all